Welcome and thank you for joining me for another Random Gaming News where today we got a few quick mentions to look at as well as what the hell's going on with Pokemon Home, the transformation of Torchlight Frontier to Torchlight 3, plus my pick of the week at the end of the video. Make sure you guys are coming back tomorrow around 6 p.m. Uh, CT, CST. Um, you can convert for your own time zones, but that is when the podcast is going to be airing tomorrow for about you know 30 to 45 minutes. We've got a couple people on and going to have a couple of news stories at the beginning of it. It's going to be fun come and uh, check us out make sure you're also checking out the links in the description for the other youtuber to check out plus the actual discord where you guys can actually suggest news you want to hear about please share the video as that would actually help out the help out the channel the most hit the subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell icon turned on hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video and let's go ahead and start the show First up here for the quick mentions, let's take a look at the games for gold and the PS Plus uh, services that they have because I feel like one of the competitors there is bringing it a little bit harder this month for the actual games that they're giving away for free. So on the Xbox side, we have uh, TT Isle of Man, uh, and that'll be going from the 1st to the uh, 29th, and then we have Call of Cthulhu, and that's going from the 16th to the 15th um, there, so the 16th of February to the 15th of March. Uh, on Xbox 360, stuff that they're giving away is uh, Fable Heroes, and that's going from the to the 15th then we have Star Wars Battlefront from the 16th to the 29th now on the PS Plus side we have actually you know a really good one and that's Bioshock the collection Sims 4 and uh, Firewall Zero Hour now like I said I felt like one of them is bringing it a little bit harder and that would be you know PS Plus because they're actually giving you three games in one by giving you that Bioshock collection there's a lot of fun there a lot of gameplay and stories and it would get you hyped for the new game that might be coming down the pipeline and then you also have the sims 4 which also has a lot of rich you know uh, back you know a lot of stuff that you can actually do inside the game itself all right so now we know there's been a lot of bad stuff happening over in australia and it's nice to take a second and see some of the good stuff that might be coming from over there house house the developers of the untitled goose game actually put out a tweet stating our video games are made on stolen now i'm going to butcher this uh wawuju uh, Lan, we at House House are paying at least 1% of our income to the indigenous group in uh, perpetuity. Uh, as part of the pay the rent movement we encourage others to do the same and it would just seem that house house you know they they see that they you know might have taken land from some indigenous groups to actually you know get their studio and all and you know anything in in between it i'm not too sure if they actually you know built the studio there for them specifically or it was already built and they're just kind of renting it out but either way you know they're seeing that hey we're doing something that might be an injustice to another group let's go ahead and give back to them a little bit since we are actually you know sitting in the Green. We got a good game out there. Xbox and PlayStation have both put it on their streaming services for you to play. Um, you know, the Untitled Goose game was just a very good sleeper hit. And it's nice to see that House House is stepping up and doing something that other studios, you know, just may not have thought of doing quite yet. And lastly, let's go ahead and look at Doom Eternal because last week that sparked some controversy, thinking that there might be microtransactions in the game. And seeing as it's coming from Bethesda and everything that happened with Fallout 76, their name has been a little bit tarnished and everybody kind of freaked out well it would seem that hugo martin he actually took to facebook stating that this is a 60 dollars game it is a full and package experience it's not a free-to-play game or mobile game and it'll actually be something that won't have a store for microtransactions in it or anything so it is nice to see that this you know doom eternal is not going to be plagued with the microtransaction stuff that had happened with uh, you know fallout 76 coming from bethesda but at the same time they did a lot of that stuff to fallout 76 after the launch of the game so we will have to wait to see what actually happens after the game is put out because it is still Bethesda making this game. Let's talk a little bit about this Pokemon Home news. So, you know, a previous version of Pokemon Home seems to be the Pokebank, where that was for the DS to allow trainers to trade their Pokemon into there so that way they can fill out their Pokedex. It was $5 per year, but it allowed those hardcore trainers to actually do what they wanted to here. And Pokemon Home just seems to be taking this to the next level, uh, as you will be paying $16 for an entire year's subscription, uh, $3 a month, or $5 for three months of the services. Now, um, there is two versions of this actual Pokemon Home and let's take a look at what the differences are here. So with Pokemon um, Home on the basic side you won't actually be able to trade from the Pokebank. Uh, you only get 30 Pokemon that you can deposit whereas the premium you get 6,000 that you can deposit. On the uh, Wonder Box the basic gets 3, the premium gets 10, the Global Trade Service only gives you 1 for the basic side and 3 on the premium side. Uh, basic people can only participate in room trades while 
premium members can actually host while participating in others. And finally, you will not be able to use the judge function for the basic version. Now, um, like I said, this is something that's a little bit of a contention for most people online if you do like Pokemon Sword and Shield. I played the game, played it through, didn't finish out my Pokédex by any means because I didn't really feel a need to continue playing on with the game. It didn't really hook me like other versions of Pokémon did. It was nice to see it on the Switch, but I wish they would have done a little bit more of what like Tim Tim did, for example. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the thing that is, you know, very strange about this is that now we have, you know, if you bought the $60 game, or, or the double pack for it, uh, I'm sorry, you'll actually be spending, you know, $120 for both those games. There wasn't a markdown on it or any discounts for that double pack. And then you, if you get both the expansions for each game respectively, that's another $60 on top of that. And now we have Pokemon Home where it's a $16 premium to actually go in there and get Pokemon Home service. I think if you buy both the expansions, you might just, you know, they should give you Pokemon Home at least for a couple of months, you know, that'd be nice. You know, $5, how much is that going to, you know, hurt uh, Game Freak and Nintendo if they allowed their customers some free months out of getting both of the expansions on one account there? But I, I don't want to really go over that. I want to talk a little bit about this deposit amount as well because that's something that kind of irritated me a little bit because if you go and fill up your all of your boxes for the Sword and Shield Pokemon and you need some extra room, you only get 30 extra slots, whereas the premium people get 6,000 and I'm not saying by any means let's give them like a couple of thousand maybe even just a couple of hundred you know that wouldn't have been bad to give them like two two to five hundred Pokemon that they can store in there at any given moment but it does seem that you know I'm I'm a little bit torn because I do love Pokemon and I want to see what they do with the expansions and all the new Pokemon stuff that is going to come out later this year but I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below if you are still playing Pokemon what's your thoughts about the expansion pass and not only the expansion pass but now we have Pokemon Home. Tell me what you think about that down in the comments below. Now let's take a look at Torchlight Frontier and the transformation for it to be Torchlight 3 now. And Torchlight games are pretty fun because they're like, you know, simpler Diablo games in a way, but done very well. Um, don't let simpler ever mean something that's bad. But Torchlight 1 and 2 did really well that they thought they'd make another game here called Torchlight uh, Frontiers. And that actually had a very rocky start as Runic Games, the game studios behind the first two Torchlight games, actually went under and it closed in 2017, leaving Arch, uh, Arc uh, Studios or Arc Games in this studio here uh, and they went ahead and uh, you know started making you know progress on Torchlight Frontier making it a free-to-play game where it actually wiped your progress as you went through the story and they got a lot of feedback on that and they decided they might want to make some changes to it redubbing it uh, Torchlight 3 now and the studios actually put out a statement here Along with this name change comes a major shift in our design approach to Torchlight 3. Uh, Torchlight 3 will be released as a premium title for one box price. You will own the game and be able to play the way you want, online or off. Over the past year, we've gathered a massive amount of feedback fr from our alpha testers after reviewing this feedback, discussing one of our internal teams, and receiving guidance from our publishers, we determined that this is the best course for the game. This shift helps bring Torchlight back to its roots and makes it a true sequel to Torchlight 1 and 2 that it was always meant to be. Accompanying this transition to a more traditional release, we'll be moving over to the Steam uh, as a platform for PC distribution. Everyone who had our previous alphas on ARC can expect to receive a Steam key in their email, granting them access to further uh, pre-release testing on Steam. And this is just great news for consumers overall as, you know, this is just a shift in this actual studio's thinking that, you know, they were going to be somewhat greedy and put a lot of microtransactions in the game. They got a lot of negative feedback and people not liking the game and thought that rather than having a PR disaster like Battlefront 2, they would go ahead and release the, you know, a new version of the game that didn't have any of these scummy, greedy microtransaction stuff in it. And I do love to see that studios are changing their minds on things like this, especially after governments are getting involved with things like loot boxes. So I, you know, applaud the people that are making Torchlight 3 now. I thank you for, you know, reversing what you've done, and I am looking forward to actually playing Torchlight 3 whenever it comes out this year. 
Now this is my favorite part of the video, where I get to tell you my pick of the week, the game that I've been enjoying, and give you a little bit of my opinion on the game. Now that game is actually going to be Tim Tim, and there are all some negatives that I want to talk about right off the bat here. That, like there's incomplete quest lines, you can't visit the all of the floating islands that you can go and visit. A lot of the Tim Tim aren't in the game, but and I know it sounds like this is you know something that you may not want to play. But you have to keep in mind that this is an early access game, so not all of that is still worked on yet. This is giving them a chance to test out a lot of the servers and see if people actually want to play this style of game because it's a Pokemon styled MMO game. And that sounds, you know, kind of out there for us, like how can it be an MMO? Um, but that's something that they've yet to fully reveal. I know there'll be like stuff like trading and, you know, co-op battles and that kind of stuff. But the game isn't fully completed and it doesn't have any of the MMO stuff really in it. It's just basically a really good Pokemon clone. And it's probably one of the best, if not the best, Pokemon clones that we have to date. It does the actual battles a little bit differently than Pokemon itself, where in Tim Tim you get actually two of the creatures thrown out versus just one. And instead of Pokeballs, it uses these cool little digital card things and it actually has digital Pokemon. So it's kind of like a little bit of a cross between um, you know Digimon and Pokemon, where Digimon has really good good solid stories I feel like they you know drum out some of these characters are and are a little bit darker um, because you know you can actually fight the trainer and kill them in Digimon but in Pokemon it's more of a kick style RPG it's got the creature battles where you collect a lot of them and Tim Tim I feel like is a perfect mix um, between the two there I really feel like it's something that you know a lot of people should go and enjoy it's over on Steam in early access like I said so there are a lot of things that you're not going to be able to do but the things that they do have you do there are wonderful and magical if you love Pokemon style games. If not, um, then maybe don't pick this up. Save your $35 for something more enjoyable for you, but it's only $35 in early access over on Steam, so rush out and pick it up now for any PC lover. Well, that's our video for today. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about anything in today's video or if I just have a great goatee. Also, uh, make sure that you're coming back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, CST to join in on the podcast live if you'd like to convert for your time zones. Um, but if not, it'll be on the channel underneath the playlist for the podcast. Make sure that you are checking out those links in the description for the other YouTuber that you might find interesting as well as the Discord server where you guys can actually suggest new news and the secret discord servers as well um, not only that please share this video to help out the channel the most hit the like button if you did enjoy today's video subscribe if you haven't already with the bell icon turned on to be notified of my next video and as always i have been tasty this has been random gaming news and have a wonderful fucking gaming night Bah!